Take two. And the mailman came and needed some attention. So, all the 500 comic books are in the building. Okay. Um, we are doing a blind box review. Um, if you like the blind box, like this video. If you don't care for me and my squeaky chair, or you do like me and my squeaky chair, please do not use the voting system. The thumbs up and thumbs down the video. Um, they are competing for a People's Choice Award, and we're using the thumbs up and thumbs down on the video as the scoring system. All right. This is the third last review. The other two reviews haven't arrived, or blind boxes haven't arrived yet. They got a little lost. So, we will see what we do about that. Okay, I don't know who this belongs to. Uh, that's on purpose, so that I don't uh, fawn over a blind box that is dumb. So, let's get into it. Give you a breakdown of my layout here. Yeah? There's the camera. There's my picture. I spend a lot of time looking at my picture because I'm a narcissist. I have ADHD or whatever you call it, so I'm going to be looking everywhere. The comic is over here for me. The comic is over here for you. And here is work. There's some chats. There's some chats and some more work. So, if I get distracted by work, I have to get distracted by work. Uh, I get, that's what I get paid to do. All right. So, these came in separate envelopes. Uh, in a particular order, with prices on the envelopes. Um, or, you know, values on the envelopes. I hope that we open them up in the right order. Um, please don't hate me if we did not. Every now and then when we unpack, or my wife unpacks a blind box, uh, things happen. They get sticky and they go, Phew. it is what it is. Uh, so let's go through this. Whoa. Okay. Uh, G.I. Joe Special Missions. Um, I do not have... I battle to find G.I. Joe stuff. Um, I think that's partly because the writer is Hummer. And he... Larry Hummer. Uh, he also wrote Wolverine. Uh, or parts of Wolverine. And so... Uh, the writing on G.I. Joe is so good and so consistent um, that it introduced a lot of the people that read comics now that are my age or a little bit younger uh, to comic book reading. Um, so they're, hard, they're harder to find like when, you know, if you're not wanting to get fleeced for the price. Um... Special Missions was first revealed in G.I. Joe 50. Um, and then it came out shortly thereafter. It's not a long thing. It's a, I think it's got 12 issues or something. Or 20, 24 issues. 24 issues. Um, so, yeah. All right. Next, uh, there's a lot of books in this spine box, so I'm gonna go fairly quickly from this point on. I think, unless I can group a lot of them together, like I just did there. Um, Sensational Spider Man number 32, is that right? Yeah, so uh, this comic, the art year is great, 
and bad at the same time. It's very symbolic of the episode of the the comic uh, itself, in that uh, MJ always has Peter's back. She's married to him at this point, um, and she doesn't know. It's they've been outed as heroes, um, and they don't know if she doesn't know if. She wants to continue this life that she's found herself in. She can't act anymore because people are too scared to put her on stage. Um, but in it, she realizes I'm talking to Sue. Um, of the Fantastic Four. Uh, that she's got to stay by her man and, pr and protect his back. Right? Look at the drawing of Spider-Man's fingers here. It's awful. Let's see if we can get to focus. It's not a very good camera. Anyhow. Uh, great, great comic. It's a really good read. Okay, we got some more G.I. Joe. This is now, this is the main line of G.I. Joe. 33, 33, yeah, so it looks like it hops around just a little. 66, 67, 83, 87, and 90 with its nice fat roll over there. Uh, like I said before, uh, Larry Hama, um, mostly set in the Vietnam time range. It was the number one comic for Marvel in 1985. The letters to the editor, or letters to the comic book series, um, peaked in, I don't know, no, no, it didn't peak. It, uh, it reached like 1250 or 1200 or something like that over a thousand let's say let's just say over a thousand letters a week can you imagine getting a thousand letters a week about something that you draw um hummus got a very nice attitude when it comes to gi joe uh he knew that it was targeting children because it was during the phase of cartoon toy line and comic um but he didn't write it for children he wrote it, uh, he actually says he wrote it as if he was writing Wolverine, um, which was an older title for Marvel. Um, and it tells, uh, it didn't dumb down, uh, okay, it did dumb down war, because war is brutal, but it didn't make the audience feel dumb as they were reading it. I don't even do that. I don't have a lot of G.I. Joe in my collection, so this is, this is fantastic. Um, and then it goes to Dr. Graves, number 44. Yes. It's the last time that it was offered at 20 cents. Um, or oh, any comic, I think, offered at 20 cents. There's four stories in here. Um... And the cover is by Tom Sutton. Um, it's a little tricky basing keys of value. Um, there was a arms race, so to speak, for being the key for the cheapest comic. And like you ended up with 11 cents, 12 cents, 10 cents, 9 cents, 8 cents. Uh, it just... It doesn't make sense to compete at that level. This was more recent. It was like in two thousands, I think. I don't know. Uh, samurai, samurai is um, a samurai who fights zombies. Um, yeah. So, this is a Neil Adams cover. Okay, 
I'll take okay. It's four different artists, but Neil Adams had a, had a part in it. Uh, it's actually a good read. Um, I think it's by. Uh, Magan? Anyhow, I don't know. Which is what I know. Uh, yes, this is a high grade. Uh, the spine is very ticked, but the edges are great. This one's got a bend in it, but it's okay. Uh,. The bend does not match the board, which means that uh, it was bent in transit before this was boarded with this board. So this might have been boarded for this uh, travel to my place, um, or could have been boarded. Uh, I don't think it was boarded. Uh, maybe. Uh, it could have been boarded more than 20 years ago. So you can see where... So it's got a dark cover. A dark back, sorry. And you can see where... The dark has rubbed off. Uh, this would have been... Pinched very hard. In a box. Uh, yeah, but I agree it's high grade. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Um, this is one of those comics that really go up in value if it's slabbed. Uh, you go from like a three dollar comic or four dollar comic to a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty. Um, this I think. This is where Transformers were still uh, able to transform into humans. And this is very obviously, to me at least, uh, Langoliers inspired uh, from Stephen King. Okay, we'll take this giant stack. This is getting too close to the camera now. Squeaky chair. Sorry about squeaky chair. Silverhawks, number seven. So this is the last issue of Silverhawks that um, was created. Uh, the same writer for Silverhawks as Thundercats, and some will refer to Silverhawks as the Thundercats of space. Um, this is a good copy. It's got some issues. So it's actually got a chew mark on the corner, um, but it's a good good copy. Uh, there are people who fondly remember the Silver Hawk show. Um, this is an early Uncanny X Men. So for a while, Uncanny X Men did away with the title Uncanny or part of the title, displaying it as Uncanny. Um, and they labeled it as all new, all different. Um, it's still the Uncanny storyline, because if you drop Uncanny off and you just call it X-Men, you're looking at 91 X-Men uh, Volume 1, which is the Jim Lee line. Um, so, you know, you normally go by what's in the corner as the series name, but you can't do that with these. Um, first Lalandra, um, there's something more important about this comic. So, Claremont wrote it, um, the, the penciler, uh, was, um, Or, yeah, I think the penciler was Cockrum. Cockrum uh, died in 2006. Oh. And we should all know his name. 
Um, he gave us Nightcrawler, Colossal Storm, Black Cat, and so many more. Um, when he was a kid, and I've brought this up a lot in these reviews, uh, he used to write to the editor of the comics a lot. Uh, you know, his letters are featured all over the place, including Adam Number One. Um, he met his wife by writing those letters, uh, Patty, and uh, and she and him were together uh, for until he died. Um, he, Neil Adams, and a couple others, uh, when he started getting sick, he, uh, they put together a fund and were able to raise $25,000 for him. Marvel also wrote a special deal for him to give him a salary um, or undisclosed amount of money to, <clears throat> to keep uh, alive, basically. So he lost that battle in 2006. Uh, but his work is often overlooked. Uh, he has a character drawn after him, uh, in you know one of the one of the uh, the Marvel uh, I think it's Marvel parody um, comics. But uh, Cockrum, great guy, uh, gave us so much. He gave us so much. He was drawing until like the day. Uh, the the year before he died, uh, he like was um, I forget what story it was, but it was a secondary story in a comic, and he couldn't do it because he was so sick. And uh, um, uh, Neil took it over and finished it. Uh, so, anyways, uh, great, great guy. All right, you know what this is? Let's see if I can display it properly. There we go. All right, so two valuable comics here. Um, three to five, four to eight. It's actually higher than that now. Um, you can get as high as forty, fifty dollars for the pair if you have them in a pair like this. Um, this one is the first cameo of Legion. We know Legion is uh, Xavier's son. And he has the first full appearance. Um, once again, Claremont is writing uh, really good. Uh, this era of New Mutants was really golden. Uh, so, yeah, very valuable comics. It's good stuff. Good stuff. I was just looking at buying this one just the other day. Oh, this is cool. Wow, this one's going, going to be really long, guys. Sorry. Uh, Looney Tunes number... Two or seven. January 59. So this is right on the cusp of being gold or silver. Since the Dell, um, and it has a horrible stapling that they used to do, um, I I would say it's a gold. Um, Looney Tunes was done by Dell until 1962, and then it got handed off to Gold Key, and they didn't print another one for like 10, 15 years or something uh, with Gold Key. So, uh, really good. Uh, Bugs Bunny looks like super derpy here. Alright. Okay, let's see what we got. We have two tales of G.I. Joe. Um, so... The Tales of G.I. Joe series was printed on higher quality paper for the first time uh, than G.I. Joe. So, um, even though they get thrashed at the same rate, uh, like this one's really good. Um, 
you you can see how quickly the G.I. Joe's original age versus the Tales of G.I. Joe. And I'm sticking with it. First half of Crackle. Crackle! Uh, Crackle's not seen very often. Uh, this is his first appearance. Uh, he also appears in the 52 series once or twice. Like, not a lot. Uh, some will argue that his first real appearance is in the 52 series because it is in um, Prime Earth versus this. Um, Crackle basically is a um, Speed Force, Lightning, Sonic the Hedgehog. He literally stands like Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so, Daredevil number 283. If you're wondering why I know these so well, it's because I don't have a lot of these or any of these. And they haunt me every day. Uh, 283. There is a inventor who wants to create a, fly, a flying car on resonance or something. And... Um, Daredevil and Captain America help him. Not the best piece of writing. That's all I'm going to say. Two more tales of G.A. Joe. Once again, very good condition for age and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Oh. Lastly, I would guess, let me check. Let's clear this off. Exciting. We have Bill and Ted's excellent comic book 1 through 12 that's the whole series uh yeah this is really hot right now um we can talk about why briefly um so they had a movie recently original actors keanu reeves etc came back to the new movie and guess what the movie sucked it really was bad and if you go back and watch Bill and Ted's excellent adventure and bogus it's not adventure bogus whatever uh those movies suck too um however the comic book was really good uh, <laughs> Um, so this got a bit of spec coming back from, uh, Bill and Ted's new adventure, whatever the heck they called it. Um, and it's definitely popular. If you read these comics, you will love them. You want to own them. Uh, they're written by a guy called Dorkin. And Dorkin is from, uh, Milk and Cheese. That's his his comic uh, that that's published with Slave Labor Group. Um, now Dawkins and his wife also write the more humorous stuff for Marvel, like the kind of funny stuff that gets very little attention. Uh, in this comic book series, um. It happens after the second movie, and uh, they're at a wedding, and Death steals the time machine, and the boys have to get it back, and they use this kind of experimental time machine that's available to them. Uh, while... I look at the look at the movies for what they are. This comic book is fantastic. The whole series is fantastic. Uh, it's twelve comics on the on the Marvel 
uh, main line and uh, it, it, uh, it stays true to the bull and Ted um, adventurous humorous idiotic storyline um, Dawkins wife's name is, is Dyer um, so you see Dawkins and Dyer great writing um, love the fact that he pairs up with his wife to do writing All right guys that is that now this collection uh, I like it's a lot of comics to put into a a mystery box uh, what helps is that they group together by series but I don't know if I would put this many books in one mystery box um, what might have happened here and we had an earlier one uh, that was the same way here is in a box um, what sometimes happens is that if they themselves had to offer a um, mystery box it would be an amazing $50 mystery box um, but because they try and do more bang for buck and they try and do that $100 limit or $150 limit um, it ends up being a lot of comics uh, this one was a little easier to deal with because they're all together um, in groups which is good all right if you liked this blind box and what was done and I'll remind you what was done we had Bones Heads Excellence Adventure we're gonna need more room for this okay we had a lot of G.I. Joe which I'm not hating I'm gonna pull it all out I'm gonna pull it all out G.I. Joe G.I. Joe A lot of G.I. Joe We had Sensational Spider-Man Remember the cover She's literally got Spider-Man's back It means something And Spider-Man apparently broke his two fingers uh, Very strange Daredevil uh, A very strange character um, As in uh, crackle a amazing gold silver border comic this is great uh, cameo and first appearance of Legion as a pair first Liliandra so Hawks Transformers Samurai for the zombies and a very nice uh, last 20 cents book many ghosts of dr. graves uh, we will very soon be seeing um, or we might be seeing the last two dollar ninety nine book um, if spawn pushes their price up to match or to because DC and Marvel are pushing their prices up too. It's really unfortunate. Okay, if you liked this blind box, it's probably a little too close. There we go. If you like this blind box, uh, please vote up this video. If you didn't like my commentary, Post a comment. I don't care. I probably got all the facts wrong in all the videos. Um, because I have a human brain and not a computer brain. That was an incorrect statement too. Alright guys, have a great one.
Okay. This is coming off the video because I'm an idiot. That box was by AKA Comic Books. I've I have bought thousands of dollars with the comics from from uh, uh, from AKA. So uh, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. I'll tap this on to the end of the other video. Bye.